What's up, Storyteller? I'm Clark Rowenson, the Magic Engineer, and it's time to talk about magic. As you can see, I'm going to be trying to get back into more of this format of video. There's still going to be some of the live stream stuff, live stream converted, trying to do some more animation stuff, going to be experimenting as my time and possibilities change, which is exciting. In this video, though, we are going to be digging into one of my favorite Lit RPG series, looking at what I like about the series and the system so much. And then we are going to be using that magic system to build out a set of magic powers for me. Now, the series is He Who Fights With Monsters, which brings me to a new and very important part of this video. So this video is actually sponsored by Podium Entertainment, the company that publishes the audiobooks of He Who Fights With Monsters and a broad range of other books and a lot of other lit RPG books and lit RPG series that I listen to. So when they reached out to ask about a par partnership and sponsorship to discuss the upcoming He Who Fights With Monsters book, I was pretty excited. So this is fully sponsored by them. They do a great job finding narrators for the various audiobooks and all of their stuff has been really high quality. Any of the Podium Entertainment books that I have listened to, I have always been impressed with. So you can check out their catalog on their website. You can also get all of their books, including the He Who Fights With Monsters series on audible.com. First off, let's talk about what it is I love about He Who Fights With Monsters. I mean, first off, the banter is great. I love the banter. The monster design, also amazing. This should come as no surprise to you that a big part of this for me is the magic system. So let's cover how that works briefly. So the monsters are their whole thing, but for the most part, we're dealing with adventurers and what are called essence users. Because in the world of Palamastus and then later in Earth, minor spoilers, magic coalesces into dense objects that represent concepts or ideals. And they come in a variety of forms, including essence stones, awakening, st awakening stones, and quintessence gems. Now, essence stones are the most concentrated version, and that is where essence user and essence ability comes from. Because as you find these, you can go through a ritual to unlock that essence within yourself, which allows you to start going through the actual cultivation leveling process that exists in He Who Fights With Monsters. And in order to go through this, you have to find a total of four essences, really just three, because once you get your first three, they then combine and create a fourth option called a confluence essence. And once you have all four, you can then unlock five abilities for each of the essences for a total of 20. You then have to rank up each of the individual abilities in order to move through the tiers within the system. So once you have all of them, you're still iron rank is the lowest rank, and then it goes up to bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. And I do have some other videos where I talk about power curves and progression arcs, and I talk about that in He Who Fights With Monsters a little bit more in that video, so you can check that out. But what I love about this system is how it focuses on the metaphorical aspects of the essences and of the awakening stones you find. Because, well, not only that, but because with that, the abilities that you uncover are all going to be shaped and affected by the essence that they are connected to, as well as the awakening stone that you used to gain the ability. Now, on top of that, the other part that I really like about this is how the abilities, when you go about it, there isn't really a wrong set of abilities. It's more about figuring out how the ones you have are supposed to work together. And as you go through your development, if you're not trying to force it and you're not trying to push yourself in a direction that you shouldn't necessarily go, the abilities will naturally start to form a kind of synergy that works with your essences and with your personality. And that becomes especially evident as you go through the ranks of iron, bronze, silver, and so on. So all of that together is just something I positively love because it is highly thematic. There's an infinite number of combinations. There's potentially an infinite type number of essences and awakening stones. So that can all lead to a huge variety of abilities. Just the scope 
of this system is incredible and it lets my imagination run wild and I positively love that. I love it a lot. Hopefully you can see why there's just so much room for exploration and huge amount of variety and it never ceases to amaze me the type of stuff that Travis comes up with and it's just incredible. Now we get into the really fun part because now is where we are going to go through building out a set of essence abilities for me. Now I'm not sure really whether this is essence abilities for me as though I were transported to Palamastus like Jason was or whether it's on earth once magic breaks free. I'm not sure it actually matters though there are a few key racial gift evolutions I feel I would need to really make this power suite work but uh, I'll get to that. So what I did is I took the list of known essences and then the list of known awakening stones put them in a spreadsheet, and then I just used random number generation to decide which ones I got. Now, the essences and awakening stones do have levels of rarity. So common, uncommon, rare, epic, and so on. I did not do any weighting of the randomization. So I didn't adjust it to make it so that common was more likely than uncommon or more likely than rare and so on, because I'm not quite one i'm not quite sure how to do that and two eh, i didn't 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 feel it needed the time because the stuff was going to be interesting no matter what and just how it works the lists have a larger number of common versus rare essences and awakening stones to begin with so i feel it kind of balanced out so to start with i mostly did random generation then as things go on i do feel much like jason did and other adventurers do as you get to a point where you have the resources to start searching for and trading for specific essences so as we get later in the list there are going to be some that i picked and some that i just made up most of those i don't think any of the ones that i made up or any of the ones that i picked are above uncommon rarity but did a whole bunch of random generation, figured out which my essences were, random generation for what my awakening stones were, and then did actually random generation to see which essence the different awakening stones would connect with when I used them. So just bear that in mind as we go through. Most of this is randomly generated. Some of it is, some of it is tailored a little bit. And then I just worked through some ideas, figuring out some cool stuff, did some tweaking after, and now we can, enough caveats, let's get into the magic already. The first set of essences that I unlocked through the random generation, I ended up passing on because the essences were life, malign, and spike. <sighs> Maybe it's just the influence from the Mistborn series, which has been another hugely formative series for me. Maybe it's just because of hemallergy, but I didn't see how life, malign, and spike could combine into anything other than a restricted essence. I, uh, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It just didn't, didn't seem good. So I rolled again. And when I rolled again, I ended up with omen, wolf, and wood. Now, looking through the known combinations that exist in the wiki, Wood and Wolf don't really show up much. Omen is there a little bit, but there aren't any known confluence essences for any of those. So I got to make up my own. I spent some time toying around with ideas and what I ended up settling on for my confluence essence was Harbinger. One just very evocative name, which I always like th those kinds of evocative names. Two, it is the name of a werewolf character from one of my other favorite series. And three, what immediately jumped into my head was because of the essences of wolf and wood was that I would be, by taking this confluence essence, I would become the harbinger of the pack and the harbinger of change and growth. And I really liked those ideas. And from there, that led me into one of my most important kind of concepts for this entire build is I figured that I needed a pack. So from there, um, let's talk. I have these sort of figured out in the order I thought I might uncover them as I was going through my own adventures. 
One other thing to note before I get into all of this, I didn't go into the deepest level of detail with these abilities of defining the amount of mana or stamina cost or doing any cooldowns or not. A lot of this is fairly high level, especially when we get to the end of the ability suite. So hopefully you can forgive me for that. The first essence I unlocked was the Omen Essence, and that became linked to my spirit attribute. And because spirit is connected to, among other things, your senses, it made sense to me for it to provide me a perception power. And this perception power is something I'm calling vision of intent or visions of intent. And what this would do is it would allow me to see energies and mental focus as it coalesces and forms. So kind of like spotting the laser from a sniper as it's moving around, I would be able to see the zones of focus as people were gathering energy for abilities or even for mundane attacks, especially as I go up through the ranks, I felt it would get more specific. So if Humphrey were to do his fire breath or something like that, I would see the energy gathering around him and I would see the cone start to form where he was gonna use it. So this would give me a little bit of kind of precognitive power, but not quite, but just being able to see what people are intending to do moments before they do it. Because I'm building towards the Harbinger of the Pack concept, it seemed only natural that when I gained the Wolf Essence, it was either because or directly related to me gaining a Mage Bane Wolf as a bonded familiar. In He Who Fights With Monsters, there are different types of creatures that Essence users can be connected to. There's Summons, where it's just something you call up and it's fairly expendable, easily replaced. You have Summoned Familiars, which are more deeply connected to you and have a, dis a distinct spirit that can be called forth again and again or replaced over time. And then you have Bound Familiars, where you are connected to a very specific magical creature. In this case, I'm thinking my Mage Bane Wolf is a bonded familiar, much the same as Humphrey is bonded to a dragon and his sister Henrietta is bonded to a phoenix. I am bound to this mage bane wolf and his name is Shio Gorath because I get to name him and, it, and uh, he goes by Shio for short because I think that's just great. I don't have a ton figured out about what this wolf does other than mage bane, so probably deals with disrupting and devouring and just messing about with the magic of other people. Oh, and the wolf essence got bound to my speed attribute. Not only that, we don't know a ton about how bonded familiars work. So I don't know whether I got the wolf essence and that allowed me to bond to Sheogorath, or maybe I bonded to Sheogorath and that's what gave me the wolf essence. Not sure. But either way, that also seemed like an appropriate time, either because of events or because of this bond for me to actually receive a racial gift evolution that would shift me from being more of a special attack focus, which most humans are, which not sure if I'm human or outworlder, but shift from being a, either a special attack focus to being more of a familiar and summon focus. Uh, so that's the main changes that the wolf essence really imprinted on me and my soul. From there, I gained multiple awakening stones. The first that I used was an awakening stone of inevitability, which awakened a new essence ability in the, for the wolf essence. This ability is called Avatar of Pursuit because wolves and people historically, are endurance predators. We chase things down and we just wear them down over time. You cause a minor bleed effect and they run for miles and they think they've escaped and then boom, we're still there. So this is really trying to lean into that concept behind all of that. So Avatar of Pursuit is a passive essence ability that would decrease the ongoing stamina and mana cost of any of my abilities. Now, as I go through higher ranks, I could see this also starting to shift into some additional movement abilities, not anything on the level of like Path of Shadows or teleport abilities or anything like that, but other things that would help me in pursuit all seems fitting for this kind of ability. The second Awakening Stone that I received was an Awakening Stone of the Sky. And when I used it, it gave me an ability called Weather of the Soul, which is a aura ability connected to my omen essence. Now, a lot of auras give sort of blanketing effects, and this one felt a little different because part of 
building towards the harbinger of the pack thing, which I feel like things would already be doing for me for a number of reasons, which I'll cover in a second, would require better understanding people, being able to communicate, being able to understand, be a diplomat, and just work with people. So Weather of the Soul is less about me projecting things and more about me sensing and understanding what I'm seeing in other people's auras. So it gives me a better sense of what other people's auras and other creatures' auras are saying. So if you aren't familiar with the series, that's fine. The auras, the way I think of it, is it's basically like a bubble of power that is around you. It's a bubble of radiation caused by your soul. And as you feel things and think things at your core, that sends ripples throughout that bubble. And people, depending on how skilled they are, can see and understand patterns in those ripples on the surface and underneath the surface closer to the core. So this ability would make me much better at reading those ripples and at higher ranks, possibly allow me even high levels of sophisticated communication through my aura and through other people's auras. So not just being able to read ripples on the outside, but being able to send ripples in that other people can interpret and understand. It's at this point in my adventures that I uncovered my third and final essence that I needed, the wood essence. Upon performing the ritual, I, the wood essence was bound to my recovery attribute, which just made the most sense for wood plants and growth. The ability that it gave me is, was my first summoned familiar, and it is a hedge caterpillar. Uh, the hedge caterpillar is just a large caterpillar, don't quite know what size, iron rank, it's probably fairly small, that has a bunch of plant growths and stuff off of it, so it looks like an ambulatory hedge. Not the fastest thing around, but it's pretty decent for defense, can do some area of effect stuff, reach out with the plants, and probably do some poisons and some spores. I don't know how much it can do initially, but it's a slower moving sort of defensive manipulation type summon. Now, I'm hoping that at higher ranks he will actually turn into a hedge butterfly, which is why I named him Monarch. I just call him Archie for short because who doesn't want a hedge caterpillar named Archie? That's great. Now with summoned familiars, they have an interesting thing where they actually get connected to specific parts of your body and your essence. And they, you perform a ritual to summon them and then they can be subsumed into that part of you. And when they are, they give you extra benefits. So for Archie, when he is subsumed, he gets subsumed into my bones. And he gives me some slowly ramping damage resistance as I get injured, as I deal stuff. Not quite retributive, but more of a response to how things are being inflicted upon me and maybe some minor manipulation of plant matter around me. Little bit of growth control there, which I thought was fun and that could escalate to some very interesting places if I ever got to diamond rank. With the addition of the wood essence, I now had the three essences I needed to gain my confluence essence of the Harbinger. I want to talk about that a little bit because I didn't just pick that out of nowhere and I didn't pick it just because it was cool. Partially because it was cool. But because of who I am, I really thrive off of collaboration and feedback of different forms. But at the same time, through the course of my life, I often find myself on the edge of groups or going off and doing things on my own. It's not that I don't like people. I'm a little bit introverted and I don't always, it takes a special group for me to really feel like I fully belong there. So it made perfect sense for me to start to have this kind of pack of my own where I could have these creatures that I was deeply connected to and had a serious bond with that I truly felt were not necessarily me, but closely related to me. And I could really feel like I was part of a unit no matter where I went. And that, just that concept really called to me on a really deep level. So this sort of seemed perfect. So upon using the Harbinger Confluence Essence, it became bonded to my power attribute. And the essence ability that it gave me is called Flesh of the Pack. It gives me some minor shape-shifting abilities so that I can mimic the attributes and properties of some of my summons and my familiars. This point, not crazy helpful because I just have a hedge caterpillar and a mage bane wolf, 
but I can take on different aspects. I can grow the teeth, do maybe do a pseudo werewolf form. I can get claws if I need to go into melee, which I actually have several years, a fair amount of martial arts experience. So that seemed like it could be a really good fit to allow me to deal connect natural weapons of my current and future familiars in with my fighting styles, which seemed like a lot of fun. Now, the other idea I had, especially at higher ranks, is for any of you who are familiar with the Worm web serial, there is a character in there called Lung, and he is connected to a dragon. And the longer his shapeshift undergoes, it takes a while, but the longer it goes, the more powerful he becomes and the more complete the transformation, but the harder the crash after. That also seemed like a wonderfully appropriate thing for this ability set that is starting to form. Hey, quick break. Just want to say if you are enjoying this video, please do take a second to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It helps tremendously. And that's all I've got. So back to the content. The Awakening Stone of Reach gave me a Harbinger, a sensibility, called Terminus Corvid, which is another bonded familiar, which as it sounds, is a raven or crow of some sort that I naturally decided to call Edgar. Edgar doesn't do as much damage. I'm thinking he's probably going to be more debuff and affliction focused than the others, with the Terminus being more focused on like the end of things. Now, when, when Edgar isn't summoned, he is subsumed in my eyes. And this is where things started to really coalesce together. Is while Edgar is subsumed in my eyes, I have the ability to see through the eyes and the senses of my other familiars, including Shio. Now, I only have two other familiars at this point, so not groundbreaking, but things are starting to get cool. The Awakening Stone of Rebirth gave me a wood essence ability I'm calling Cycle of Seasons. At iron rank, it doesn't seem like much. What it does is anytime there is a decrease in my health, mana, or stamina, I get a small amount of recovery in the other two pools. So to start, it's not a huge thing, but it does help me stay viable longer in fights, especially if I'm making sure to do a balance across the three. So not much to start, but it's definitely become and going to become interesting as I get into the higher ranks. This brings me to the Awakening Stone of the moment. This gave me an Omen Essence ability, which might be, might be one of my favorites. It's, it's odd, but it is called Awake Within the Weave, and it is a spell. What it allows me to do, because where things are starting to go is moving towards sort of a pack master sort of tactical management type role. And I really like that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I always struggle with is when I get overwhelmed, the one thing I always want to know is what should I focus on? That's what Awake Within the Weave helps me deal with. When I cast the spell, it takes what I'm thinking about and what I'm worried about and helps me understand the most impactful and important thing around me related to that question, worry, or concept. So if I'm wondering what an enemy has up the sleeve or up their sleeve or where a hidden danger might be coming from, it is going to help draw my focus to where those important things are happening. Again, weak at iron rank, probably because the the intuition it pulls me to is going to be vague. Also, I have to learn how to ask the right things, which is a big part of this type of ability is learning how to work with it properly. And it doesn't stop me from getting hurt or anything like that. But we're starting to see some of the synergy come forward because this combined this combined with the visions of intent is going to help me spot the most important stuff, see the direction it's going, and start to react before it actually happens. The adaptability and the rapid prioritization is something I struggle with, and now I'm, I'm gaining essence abilities to help me deal with those things that I find to be some serious deficiencies at time, which I think is super cool. Next up was an Awakening Stone of Defiance, which gave me an Omen essence ability. This is yet another bonded familiar that doesn't sound like much, but it's called a mirror zebra. And it's pretty cool. I was talking with a friend a while ago, and she works a lot with horses, and she was saying people don't appreciate how 
dangerous the ungulates and uh, equestria creatures can be and how aggressive they can be, which I've lived in Wyoming. I know how messed up moose can be. And I love that idea, especially zebra. Zebra seemed like the epitome of defiance among the hooved creatures. So all of this sounded great. Plus the mirror zebra, I decided to call her Tori, short for refractory, because Tori is a as bizarre as it sounds, mirror zebra that is an attack focused and retribution focused creature and summon. And she's just amazing. When Tori isn't summoned, she is subsumed in my skin and she grants me minor retributive damage, damage reflection and some minor spell reflection. So Tori's pretty awesome. This is the point where I started making up some stones and feeling I could probably start buying stones off of the market. So the next one that I got was an Awakening Stone of Connection, which gave me a wolf essence ability called Pack Link. This is a second aura ability. It's not something that comes up much. To be a high quality adventure, you want at least a perception ability and an aura ability because aura, an aura ability is usually what allows people to start manipulating their own aura, which is really important, especially at higher ranks. If you don't want to, you know, like cause other people to bleed through their ears and eyes, you can have multiple essence, multiple aura and multiple perception abilities. It's just not common. And the more aura abilities you have, it gives you more potency, but it also makes it actually harder for you to control your own aura. So not the best thing by getting this, but this is where things start to get more fun because pack link, this is one that does affect me and surrounding people probably just starts with me and then develops into being something that buffs all of my allies. Pack Link makes me hyper aware of the position and movement of my allies. So if you have read the series, Sophie has an ability that makes her hyper aware of her surroundings, which makes her ridiculously good at parkour and dodging incoming attacks. Because, well, mostly navigating through environment, it doesn't apply as much to the enemies. So it's like that, but for my allies. The idea behind this is I don't need to look to know where people are, which is gonna make pack coordination and direction that much easier. At this point, whether due to my adventures or something else, or maybe it's down the line, but with this awakening of the second ability, I feel I would need a secondary gift evolution of one of my other racial attributes that would make it so my summons have a greater impact on my aura control. So the more summons I have, the stronger my aura and the stronger my aura control. Two-edged sword. That means when I have my full pack, I'm able to deal with the problem of having multiple aura, multiple aura abilities without much issue. But if I have them all summoned, that's diminished. And if any of them die, then that gets diminished further. So if an, I'm in a bad situation and things start to go south and my summon familiars start dropping, my aura control is going to get worse and worse. Now it's not gonna plummet like all the way to a rank below, but I'm gonna start losing one of my edges. So I feel like that kind of balances out. At this point, my, my essence abilities are definitely taking a specific direction. We've talked about that a little bit, but really going down the summoning, the summoning route, familiar route with this pack tactics focus. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise when the Awakening Stone of Earth gave me a wood essence ability that was another summoned familiar. This one is called the Avatar of Growth. I call it Denny, short for Dendrite, because <laughs> I'm a nerd like that. Denny is largely stationary and is incredibly Iron rank is incredibly defensive focused. So Denny in my mind is a tree that is growing and all kinds of cool effects where the branches are apparently continuing to grow and branch and move out, but he's never actually getting bigger. Well, slowly getting bigger. He's not getting bigger as fast as the grant as the branches seem to be growing. So highly stationary, but can start adding a whole bunch of defense, possibly start getting into some extra healing and recovery. And this will be an interesting thing where when I use Denny, it is probably going to be me 
summoning Denny right under or right next to me and Denny kind of lifting me up and supporting and guarding me, which is starting to turn me into a stationary hub of, of the battle that's going on, which has its pros and cons. I'm in a defensive position. I'm also a sitting target. So if there's creatures with very fast attacks with really good aim or something that can punch through Denny's defenses, I'm really easy to line up on. But how cool is it to have a living tree that sort of envelops you like a frickin' fortress? It, it's great. And Denny only gets better with time. When Denny isn't summoned, uh, Denny is subsumed in my immune system and grants me a recovery ability, the magnitude of which it requires meditation, the magnitude of which is determined by how stationary I am, how much verdant life there is around me, whether I'm in water and whether I'm in direct sunlight. So basically, basically it makes me into a plant. And I'm okay with that. This next one doesn't seem like much. It's called Guiding Hands, and it's an essence ability related to Omen that I got from the Awakening Stone of the Hand. Really all it lets me do is it lets me conjure a phantasmal hand to touch and interact with things around me. Iron Rank doesn't do much. Maybe minor attack deflection, maybe. Primarily what I'm thinking I use it for though is a form of nonverbal communication with my allies and with my familiars. I don't know if it's invisible or spectral or whatnot, don't know, but I can reach out with this hand and I can tap them on the shoulder or pull on the fur a little bit, kind of like reins, and it allows some sort of ranged communication without actual words. And down the line, might actually use legitimate sign language communicating with my allies with these hands that as it goes up in ranks, I can probably pro probably summon more of them. They'll be able to apply more force, maybe start pulling people and things around the battlefield. So it doesn't seem like much initially, but it's one of those things about figuring out how to use it effectively. Also, the energy cost for this is going to be very low. Now, that's all of the essence abilities that I planned on building out. But by this point, I was having too much fun. So I kept going and I went and did all 20. <laughs> so these last ones aren't as fully developed as the previous ones have been, but I do sort of have the ideas in place for how I think they would work. And then I want to talk with you about how all of this would start to combine as I go up in the ranks. Next is a Harbinger ability that came from the Awakening Stone of Ruin, and I call it the Fate of Prey. It's very similar to Jason's Mark of Sin or like Hunter's Mark from D&D. I'm trying to make it different, but I felt I very much needed this. This is one of the few things that I needed to truly take that sort of endurance predator hunter thing to the next level, is I need a way to track my prey. And initially, I think all it really does is it will probably dampen people's ability to recover. It's not gonna do ongoing damage. It's not gonna do anything like that, but it makes it easier for me to find them and it makes it so it is harder for them to recover. So all I have to do is keep chasing them down and keep chipping away, and eventually I will win. Next came an ability from an Awakening Stone of Focus, which gave me a Wood Essence ability. I'm just calling Potency Surge. It's a spell, and or it's a spell, or it's going to be stamina based, but it's going to have a heavy cost. And what it does, at least initially, is it gives me or an ally a boost to their power attribute and it's gonna come at a heavy cost. Now, there are other things like Hero's Moment, which I think is Neil's ability, and it's sort of like a much diluted spirit coin. Right now, Iron Rank, it's just power, and there's still gonna be a crash after, so some good, some bad. At this point, there's still some things missing in my ability suite to really round out this kind of archetype that we're moving towards. One of them is having some additional summons when I need them, if I want stuff that is expendable for me to use in dire situations. So when I got another Awakening Stone of Flesh, it seemed only natural for it to give me a wolf essence ability called Pack Multiplication. And this ability has a high cost, but it creates duplicates of my familiars and potentially myself on the battlefield. So we now have additional allies, not as strong, but they can be a bit more sacrificial and allow for more maneuvering and tactics if that's what we need. I'm still missing 
really any kind of special attack or debuff, which is where the next two come into play. With Awakening Stone of Voice, that gave me the Harbinger ability I'm just calling Herald's Roar. Don't know a ton about what it does. It's obviously going to be some kind of AoE debuff. Then with an Awakening Stone of Movement, I got a wood ability just called Thorn Javelin. Basic special attack, hurls a giant thorn-like javelin, maybe summons it and allows me to fight with it, but I'm thinking primarily of using it as a projectile. Pretty simple stuff. Now there are just two ability slots remaining, and I love both of these. The next came from an Awakening Stone of Unity, which gave me a wolf essence ability simply called Live and Die as One. I'm sure you can guess what it does. It allows me to connect at the very least with my familiars, maybe down the line with other allies, but we all connect together and allows me to direct some kind of damage distribution and resource and healing across. It's not really healing because it's just going to be taking health from me or taking health from Shio and putting it into Denny or vice versa. So it's me managing not just positioning, but resources as a whole. And it's pretty awesome. Finally, an Awakening Stone of the Surge gave me my last Harbinger ability called the Next Moment. It's very similar to Sophie's Moment of Oneness. I'm thinking it's just something that gives a very brief amount of invulnerability and then allows you to deliver damage that was accumulated as a retributive damage in your next attack. Not as potent because this is going to be something that, again, I can put on my summons on, on my familiars and on my allies. So more versatility, lower in effect, but it's going to be it's not a true shield ability, but it's going to allow me to act with a bit more defense and preventative action in mind. This is just the beginning. I already like the type of role that is being built where I have a group with me at all times, each of us built for slightly different roles. And when I have them subsumed, they allow me to deal with different situations. And it's just, it's very versatile, but it's not, it's not about me doing things. It's about me directing and helping and managing the group as a whole so that we can survive and overcome things. And also <laughs> chasing off and chasing down our, our, our enemies and other monsters so we can get them into more tactively advantageous positions for us. But again, this is just the start. This is just iron rank. And I see so much cool potential for as I go through bronze and silver and gold, all of my familiars are going to start getting extra abilities. Like Tori is probably going to be able to start absorbing spells and then releasing them at a later point or using things where it's locking people out of abilities, similar to what Belinda does. And Shiogorath is going to be even better at just devouring people's energy reserves, maybe using that as some kind of healing effect. So turning into pseudo vampiric, probably more focused on mana than on stamina, but it might go the stamina route. I don't think he would really go health. And... <laughs> with Archie, he's going to get more defensive, have more control effects. Denny is going to start having increased defensive things, probably going to be the source of a main source of rejuvenation and regeneration with our team. And at a higher level, I think he might also serve as another pseudo summoning portal because part of Denny's original idea for me was with the idea of Avatar of Growth was to make him kind of like the flesh abominations that we see in books two or three, I think it's book two, where they adapt to the situation. Now, Denny's stationary, but Denny is constantly growing. He's getting bigger, getting thicker defenses. I, I thought it would be so cool if he started growing pods that would then split open into weak summons, weak monsters, and those monsters start adapting based on what Denny has encountered and what I am seeing and dealing with in the battle. And all of this combines with, you know, the potency surge, me being able to boost how big that is, maybe starting to boost spirit and recovery and other things. So I'm really digging into the attributes and boosting them up. I also, all of my stuff, I think, will go from anything that is a single target will go to multi-target. Anything that is multi-target will go to single target. So that potency surge... It may not go up in strength, or when it does go up in strength, I think the part of it is I won't be able to give 
that spirit coin effect to my entire team. But I can take that magnitude boost and distribute it across whoever I want, which means, yes, they're going to get a smaller boost, but it means that the backlash is going to be smaller as we come out of that, which is going to be easier to deal with. Dealing with live and die as pack, I'm going to be able to control what moves around and flow things a little bit. And especially, especially if I'm drawing resources from myself and we combine that with cycle of seasons, then I am getting boosts as I give health to somebody else. I am recovering mana and stamina and then I give mana to somebody else and I'm recovering health and stamina. And I can be doing these things, really trying to balance all of this in me, which is going to put me in a potential, potentially vulnerable position. But is still super cool and that combined with the enhanced multitask capability of awake within the weave and visions of intent i'm really going to get a sense and that with pack link right it's all starting to meld together in this awesome thing where i know where everybody is i know what everybody needs i'm able to give and take and shift and move and boost and drain and it's just so cool I wish I, I wish I had this so, so bad. <sighs> so obviously I had a ton of fun with this and I hope you did too. <sighs> I want these abilities so bad. Ugh. But Travis, hey, if you want to use any of these, you just let me know. But I just want to give another big thanks to Podium for sponsoring this video. And I want to give you a final reminder that the audiobook for book 11 of He Who Fights With Monsters is just coming out July 23rd of 2024, and you can pick it up on Audible. And oh man, I hope that you enjoy this series and this magic system as much as I do, or maybe even a little bit more than you used to now that you have got to see me nerd out about it and you can start running off and forming your own ideas. But that is enough out of me. This turned out to be much more involved and longer than I intended, but I'm okay with that. So thank you so much for being here and whatever you do, make sure that you keep writing and stay awesome.